What's going on? What's going on, guys? This is your man, Real Deal, Steven Steele, coming to you live, coming to you live this Thursday night. Feeling all right, out of sight. What is good tonight? Got a full house, more coming in as we keep keep going on as the seconds continue. Uh, welcome, welcome to Steven Steele Live. You are watching Steven Steele. Guess what? I'm Steven Steele. Uh, my co-host tonight is none other than Dogecoin millionaire Nick Balls, and we've got a great show lined up for you. So relax, kick back. Whether it's with a strong cocktail some, or some chamomile tea, some fresh juice, or some combination thereof, just get into it, folks. If we could ask you to smash that like button before we continue, it takes a split second of your time, doesn't cost you a dime. Number one thing you can do to help a channel like this, ascend through those tricky YouTube algorithms so we can reach more people. Also, if you're brand new here, I'd like to personally welcome you uh, and uh, to join our awesome eccentric community here. Uh, so hit subscribe, hit all that notification bell so you can continue to ascend with us to the moon, to Mars and beyond. Some are even going to Uranus, Uranus after that. I don't think I will be one of those people, but uh, I think I will move on to Saturn, Saturn perhaps instead. Uh, who do we got in the chat tonight? We've got Doge, uh, Zombie Doge Army, Chico Doge, Chico Doge, Doge, MD Hewitt, Drew, Night Night. I like that name, Night Night. Uh, let's see, the, the new upcoin team is in there. Good to see you guys. Uh, Andy Shirley, Harsh, uh, me and you. Marie Potter, hello. Uh, Hunter Wayne, uh, Daniel, uh, Lauren, Sleigh Blaze, Donna, Donna Tabuki, uh, Mr. Particle, Lauren, um... Larry Ramirez, of course. Uh, Scott Herforth, yes, welcome, Scott. Um, I blow Joe. Hi, I'm new here. Welcome, welcome, uh, blow Joe. Uh, Antoinette, Antoinette Tabuki, welcome, welcome. Uh, Dogenaire69, welcome. Uh, then the, uh, Cray, Doe, uh, Charles, the list goes on, the list goes on. Great to see you guys, great to see you guys. Um, so yeah, yeah, without any further ado, we'll just kind of crack into things here. Uh, Nick, how you feeling tonight, man? I can't hear Nick, let me see, let me adjust my volume, make sure. Uh, give me another check there, Nick. Um, yeah, Nick, I don't know if you're a away. I think he still might be away. <laughs> he probably stepped away, but I see his mic is muted. And I don't know if he knows it's muted, but uh, he'll work his way back in. He'll work his way back in. Anyway, look at this big green candle, this big, thick green weenie that has occurred and transpired uh, since we've been on the air. Uh, pretty extraordinary uh, little pop up there. Uh, we will see if it continues. Uh, definitely pushing us closer to that 27 heaven. Uh, so if we can get there. Now keep in mind, those of you who tuned into this morning show, I had a great show this morning and I was talking about the fact that there is a threshold. There is a threshold uh, around um, 29, 30 cent threshold that we're looking at that once Doge can prove it and establish itself there, for about two days, uh, the probability of it going up exponentially from there greatly, greatly increases. So we wanna keep an eye on this and cheer on the Dogecoin to hang out at 29.30 cents for about two days because that uh, automatically increases what, we, what I am seeing as a tremendous probability to see increases upwards of 50 cents, uh, 50 cent, um, 
50% plus, 50% plus. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, let me get to the first story that is up here. Uh, this comes courtesy of Benzinga. Benzinga, why Dogecoin looks like it's ready for a breakout, crypto breakdown. Um, and it just basically goes over. What was really interesting about their analysis on Benzinga is it was confirming and coordinating with everything that I was talking about this morning and more I'm so uh, more so last night. Uh, Nick is back in the mix. Um, so it, yeah, it looks like if we can reach that threshold of hanging out about 29.30 cents, 29.30 cents for about two days in a row, uh, that is gonna exponentially increase uh, a potential huge, huge uh, uh, breakout uh, within the immediate future, uh, perhaps within the week. What's going on, Nick? I, I, you got my text, right? No. Oh, yeah. My brother locked himself out. Sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, uh, how far did you get? Yeah, we're, I was just breaking down, talking about the uh, the probability of a potential 50% plus break breakout and what, what would have to uh, transpire and for that to happen. Yeah, um, I don't know if you referenced the FX article yet. Uh, no, go ahead. Yeah, so basically, you know, FX Street, a uh, very well-known source, um, has posted a great article, and the, the title is Dogecoin Price Provides Perfect Buy Opportunity for a 50% Breakout. Um, you know, this has been something that we've been talking about for... Uh, about the past week or two now, um, you know, Dogecoin getting up to that 30 cent level is really what it's going to take. Um, and, you know, if you've been watching, you know, forget about yesterday. <laughs> if you've been watching price action over the past several weeks, um, you know, you could you could see where this is going. Um, I've been predicting that 30 cent level for a little while now. We got... <laughs> It's so funny. I mentioned this, you know, to my girlfriend who, uh, you know, doesn't understand crypto. Well, pretty much doesn't understand crypto at all. And she's like, didn't didn't Doge get up to the 30 cent level the other day? It was actually 2973 right on it. So, wow. um, you know, this is something that I'm going to be looking for personally. Uh, I mentioned in the chat r right before um I might be looking for a little short sell opportunity if we can breach this level because it looks like um, if everything plays out right, um, a move past that 30 cent level is clear um, up to about 45 cents, which which is where it should top out. Right. Um, so that's, that's kind of a short term target I have. I don't know if I'm going to sell exactly 100k yet, I haven't made my mind up. Um, but that's that's pretty much a little short term play that I have. And I right. think everybody should be kind of excited and looking forward to because if it plays out, it's going to play out in the next few days here, probably this weekend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I think so, too. I think uh, where we're going to see this opportunity uh, begin to transpire is over the weekend. Uh, we could see. Um, we could see Doge. It wouldn't surprise me if we saw Doge step it up to that twenty nine thirty cent mark uh, somewhere over the weekend, either starting tomorrow, even starting Sunday, going into the next week. Um, and I think there is a, a tremendous window of opportunity here, Nick. In re uh, now, I haven't gotten a chance to talk to you since the flash crash occurred. Um, what do you attribute uh, pr predominantly this most recent flash crash to? Evergrande. Yeah. <laughs> Would you care to expound? Yeah. Um, so, two seconds here. I'm just putting stuff away. Um, yeah, so Evergrande is one of China's largest uh, real estate developers. Um, and they've been in hot water for quite some time now. The most hilarious thing is, so, the whole flash crash was it was due to Evergrande possibly def you know defaulting. Um, on their loan payments, specifically, um, uh, uh, not bank notes. What do they call those things? Um, bonds, bond payments. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the market completely, you know, uh, face planted in in a matter of hours. 
and it was a it was a huge nothing burger. They they didn't uh, they didn't default. They made a last minute payment. So you know this is again China fudding their way into free Bitcoin and whatever else they're getting their grubby little paws on. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. And this is something um, uh, it's something not in, not entirely new as far as the reasoning uh, behind these flash crashes. Um, it's not the first time it's uh, come from China. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this this is this is nothing new. Um, uh, in my opinion, a pretty good accumulation uh, window uh, if you have the capital to allow it. Uh, I know that there's I noticed that there's a few. Um, Looks like a few newer names in the chat. I'm wondering what's been up with Doge. Uh, they say that it's dead. It's been sleeping too long. Uh, it's not going anywhere, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we know that these folks are new to the channel because we uh, clearly go over this and explain this <laughs> time and time again. But I don't mind explaining it again. Uh, I, I, I'm going to give it a little analogy here, and then I'm going to pass it off to you, Nick, because uh, I don't think there's anyone uh, better to uh, address this than you, given your history. Uh, you know. If you're watching a football game, and let's say it's the Bears versus the Green Bay Packers, and the Green Bay Packers beat the Bears, and let's be honest, Nick, it's in all probability what, would, what usually happens. Yeah, you're going a little far here. <laughs> uh, but let's say the score ends up being uh, 40, 40, uh, 42 to 3 at the end. Now, let's say the Green Bay Packers, in the duration of that game, scored the overwhelming majority of their points in the first half of the game. Now, when the game completes, do people say the Packers didn't really win or it wasn't really a win because the points were scored at the first half of the game and not many at the second half of the game? No, of course not. That's preposterous. They're still clearly the victors, right? Still clearly had an excellent game. I see this as analogous to what Dogecoin has done over the duration of the past 12 months. So over the past 12 months, we've seen Dogecoin up over 9,000% since the beginning of 2022, over 4,500% increases. Uh, just because we've been in an accumulation period for the last five or so months, uh, is it necessarily a bad thing? Is it something that's terribly out of the ordinary? Uh, the fact that Dogecoin came from a fraction of a penny 12 months ago and has continuously stabilized and held on at um, in or very close to the being a top 10 uh, cryptocurrency uh, and given everything else that's been transpiring behind the scenes to what I believe to set the table uh, for Dogecoin to be the, uh, one of the more predominant transacted cryptocurrencies on the planet, uh, I'll bode very well for it and very well for it as a continued uh, excellent long-term investment. Uh, now your thoughts on this, Nick. Yeah, I, I would like to, you know, it, it's funny. I was actually talking to Batman uh, the other day about this, for those who don't know, Goose Wayne. Uh, oh, Jerry from Edison here. What up, Jerry? Oh, is he? Um, hey, yeah, what's up? Awesome. What's up, Jerry? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Um, so, yeah, I was talking to Batman about this the other day. You know, Dogecoin is, it's so funny because it's almost, you know, as, as we know, it is really an introductory crypto. For people who are brand new to crypto, sometimes, or most of the time, up until, you know, just this year, uh, you know, Dogecoin was pretty much what everybody first got into. It's very user friendly. It's fun. Uh, it's very easy to acquire, and thusly, it makes for a very appropriate crypto for newb newbie, you know, investors. Yes. Transversely, Dogecoin is one of the biggest cryptocurrencies that requires the most amount of patience, and the ones that are in control, i.e., the exchanges hedge funds big money in whales not myself i don't consider myself a whale but big money knows this and they know that people get impatient when dogecoin is doing very little however when dogecoin is doing very little is when they are making their biggest plays and they are preparing and like i'm witnessing right now in the structure of dogecoin's movements it is coiling up for an explosive move to the upside. Dogecoin might not make these explosive moves to the upside that often, but when they do, they are absolutely massive. And the big money knows this. Mm -hmm. They bet on you not being patient. Yes. And, you know, Batman is a perfect example. 
<laughs> he got he got drunk one night and sold all of his Dogecoin, and he made a big mistake. You know, and that's okay. You know, we we all make mistakes. But for those people who are new to the show or might be new to the chat, you need to realize that Dogecoin has a very um, newbie friendly exterior. But the interior of Dogecoin, the technicals of Dogecoin, are extremely high level. Yes, if yes. You, if you want to try and play the game, you better know what you're doing. I, I really suggest that people, if they're brand new to crypto, which most people are, it's, let's admit, a lot, of the, a lot of people in the chat, a lot of people on Twitter, they've been here for less than a year, or almost exactly a year. A, a very small percentage of them got in last year, which, hey, good for you, you're up. Yes, um, yes. But even then, you still only have a little bit over a year of experience. I would not try and play the game with people like whales yes. because you're going to lose. So just wait. It, it will happen. Yeah. Uh, really well stated there, Nick. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, now, as I've been discussing more and more because I feel like it's this is an increasingly relevant uh, point to get across to the audience out there, is the fact uh, how most uh, crypto millionaires are actually made, um, and no one's more familiar with what I'm about to say than you, Nick, obviously, but most crypto-centric channels will actually pivot the exact in the exact opposite manner of what they suggest or encourage among their audience. Uh, I take a quite sharply different view uh, in terms of that. I do not encourage people to uh, overall unless you're talking about some hit it and quit it kind of uh, BSC token kind of things. But other than that, um, I don't encourage uh, swing trading strategies or shorting strategies in any capacity, unless you are very well seasoned in this and have a long, a rich history of it, including doing this in, in the stock market. I do not advise that. Uh, most people are gonna end up with a big L in the lose column, uh, conducting uh, their investment strategies that way. The overwhelming majority of uh, established uh, millionaires and multimillionaires that happen through crypto happen through picking solid projects with good utility, okay, and good production and a good team behind it, and simply holding, okay, holding those positions for a course of several years, not one year, not six months, certainly, not even two years. We're talking several, several years. So, if you do that, that's going to give you... I don't know the quote exactly, but it's basically, you know, gaining wealth is moving money from uh, the impatient to the patient. I mm -hmm. have been the most patient person in that I've ever met, <laughs> you know, um, and that's how I essentially made all my money. Now, that being said, uh, a lot of people, especially this year with the explosion of the BSC uh, token market and the... Um, you know the uh, the ERC twenty world um, have ha they have made a a considerable amount of money flipping these tokens uh, and basically day trading in the token world. I'm not I'm not discounting that. I think there is money to be made there. I, personally, it's not for me because that's just not my investment strategy, and my investment strategy has been working great for me so far. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, I will say this, if you are messing around specifically in the ERC-20 world, right now is an absolutely perfect time to get wrecked to hell. Um, and here's why. Ethereum is, is setting almost all, new all-time highs on a daily basis right now. Yes. Um, which means the gas fees on Ethereum are bananas. They are through the roof. If you are trying to flip ERC-20s at this very moment, you are. there are so many factors that can line up to get you completely wrecked, and the, the most in, crucial being that gas fees are completely unpredictable. Um, and when you're talking about working through, you know, pancake swap or any of these platforms where you have to set a slippage rate that you are almost never aware of because you're not sure what the you know what the given gas price is at the moment now add on top of that that you're going to be paying taxes on all of this 
Um, the, don't get me wrong, the percentage gains are outstanding. You know, they were talking about thousands of percent. However, you have to take into account how much of that is going to go into gas, how much of that is going into slippage, and how much of that is going into taxes. There's Now there's multiple moving factors. You have to assess that on the fly because a lot of the times these ERC-20s or BSC, it's less of a problem because the fees aren't as high, um, but these things are all... Uh, moving targets that you have to compl you have to bullseye all of them at the same exact time. People, if you're brand new to this world of investing, um, I would say be not even just be cautious. Be, I would just stay away for the moment of trying to flip ERC twenty tokens because it is it is rough right now. You might, I mean, the chances of you hitting it big are they're they're still there. It's still possible, um, but it is there. The chances of you getting completely broke is much higher than it's ever been. Yeah, I think you raise a good point in terms of the uh, uh, word of caution there. Uh, we are seeing um, a rise in popularity of ERC-20 based tokens. Um, um, they most notably uh, become more popular uh, due to the few that have gone absolutely parabolic. Uh, Elon Doge Mars comes to mind as, as one of those. Uh, the problem is, from an average investor's point of view, when they invest into ERC-20, you're paying gas fees to invest, and then you're paying gas fees to pull. So even if you are, you come from a pretty sage conservative mindset, if you even want to invest in some of these projects, even if you put 100 or $200 in and nothing else, you're going to have to, at minimum, double your money just to break even. So at- in and keep in mind too, Stephen. A lot of these tokens have percentage hits on the sell as well. Right, right. Perce <laughs> yeah, per yeah. Percentage hits on the sell to offset for whatever tokenomics it may or may not have uh, set into place in its in its model. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So you're going to have to literally. Uh, probably a little more than double your money in order just to break even. Now, some people risk it for the biscuit and then they, you know, it ends up kind of being a parabolic situation. But, you know, you can get into the cycle where if you keep dropping a hundred bucks here, 200 bucks there, 50 bucks here on all these various ESC 20 tokens, before you know it, you're going to have a bunch of dead investments that you're not even able to pull out because it's not even worth it for what you're going to pay in Ethereum gas fees just to get uh, your investment out and back and swapped out back into ETH, right? So, you know, in my opinion, so here, here's another thing to consider to try to play devil's advocate here. People that are more um, prevy to the ERC-20 token model for projects like this uh, say, well, because you have to pay these gas fees in and out, it makes it less subject uh, to taking... Uh, huge crashes and dips because uh, more investors are invested and kind of essentially stuck there because um, they they want to at least uh, they want to at least break even before they even think about pulling out right whereas a BSC the consequences of of pulling out anytime are much less to the investor so I guess I could kind of see that and maybe there's some truth to that I don't think there's enough metrics or data available to know how much of that is a uh, how much of that is a pro versus versus a con? Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to play both sides because I, I do I do hear that argument uh, for people that are more bullish on ERC twenties. I myself now, and I talk about this more with the, the members only streams. Um, I am more bullish on if you're going to step it foray into that sector of the market. I I am more privy to the stuff on the BSC smart chain because uh, first of all. If if you start seeing it go down, you can pull you can pull out immediately without much consequence financially, gas fee wise. Secondly, um, a lot of the more high utility emerging high utility gaming industry DeFi projects are uh, for the for the most part set on the uh, BSC blockchain. I mean, some of them are on the ESC twenty, but um, most of them are on the the BSC blockchain. So. Um, and I, I think that's a, uh, a worthy uh, sector, emerging sector within crypto uh, to, keep, to keep an eye on. Uh, Donna coming in again at uh, $5 Super Chat. 
Are gas fees tax deductible? Nick. I do. I, I don't quote me on this, but I don't believe so. I believe they are taxed at what would be short-term capital gains because you're paying, you're basically paying them uh, at the time. However, actually, now come to think of it, um, I don't think you get taxed on gas fees because you're not, you're not gain. There's no gains there. You're not making right. any. Now consult with your local CPA, um, but I don't believe there's any tax fees on, on gas because it's not technically a. You're not. There's no gain there. Um, it's so funny, Stephen, that you know there was a time for I don't know most of the year, yeah, um, when ERC twenties were a safer bet <laughs> than than BSCs, um, and you know that has kind of uh, flipped in the sense that I think ERC twenties are coded a lot better and in um, they I think they are technically speaking from a security standpoint a safer investment. Yes. Um, however, now that the gas has gotten just completely out of control, um, they have become uh, not <laughs> not a safer investment in the sense of uh, earnings potential. I think the earnings potential in the BSC world is is a lot higher now. When you know, for just a majority of this year, that that was not the case. Right. Right. And Scott's weighing in there and says gas fees are not capital gains. My best guess is. You're not taxed on them, but I'm not an expert. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that would be my inclination as well. My inclination as well. Um, yeah, I, I agree. It, it used to be that um, ERC twenties were um, a sure, uh, perhaps a better bet. Perhaps a better bet. Uh, but with the uh, rising in con the, the consistently rising gas fees, have kind of uh, flipped that uh, notion on its head. So, so just be careful. Even if you are invest putting a small invest, in, think you're putting just a small investment into an ERC twenty token on the chance that it could really go. Just, uh, just know what you're getting yourself into. Just know that you're going to have to uh, at least uh, two and a half times your investment just to be able to break even and pull that investment out. So, you know. Just, just be sure. Just be sure that's that's something that's something you want to do before you would proceed with that, uh, guys. If you haven't already liked the stream, if you could just hit that like button, much appreciated. Uh, it takes a split second of your time, doesn't cost you dime. Number one thing you can do to help the channel out um, and uh, just get it up into those tricky YouTube algorithms. Um, and if you're new here, I'd like to invite you to subscribe. Uh, we've got an awesome community here. We've got the best community, and we would love to have you be a part of it. Uh, as we ascend in our journey day after day, night after night. Nick and I are now expanding to two morning shows a week. Two morning shows a week. I'm simply calling it GM, period. GM. Uh, Nick was supposed to join this morning, but he had uh, he had some health stuff going oh, on. Yeah Nick, Nick, I... yeah, Nick, how you doing with that? Oh, God, Stephen. Um, I'll, I'll explain why I'm, I guess I'll explain why I'm not on camera tonight. Um, so I told the story the other day about how I had this, you know, <laughs> this this pimple problem, um, <laughs> and so the other day it kind of got really bad um, to the point where there's basically like a golf ball sized lump poking out of the back of my neck. Um, tried to pop it, a lot of pus came out. It was disgusting. Um, it is extremely painful. Um, I haven't slept in basically two days because I can't, like, it's, like, really uncomfortable to lay on it. Yeah. Um, I I should be going to the doctor tomorrow. They scheduled me with, like, a rushed appointment um, to get it drained. So um, I'm not doing great. <laughs> I'm not uh, doing great, Stephen. It sounds like you need to, uh, it sounds like you need to go to see uh, the Dr. Pimple Popper. I know, I know. I keep my my girlfriend absolutely loves that show, and I watch it sometimes too. I can't. Um, I, I have a I kind of a weak stomach for that stuff. I can't watch it. Dude, my favorite. So, uh, it, for those of you who do, I don't know if you're I I take I've taken the twenty three and Me uh, test, um, the genetic testing, and one of the things describes what kind of uh, like earwax you have, which yeah. also correlates to what kind of uh, pimple goop you have yeah um 
it's really cool Asian people specifically that's where you know all those pimple popping videos that you see on like Instagram or TikTok or whatever where when they squeeze the pimple it looks like cottage cheese coming out oh god okay um, that, <laughs> that's uh, those are people of Asian descent they actually get like this thick like waxy substance in their pimples that's really cool um, I don't uh, I'm not uh, at all Asian so I don't get that like mine is just like a clear liquid um, yeah it's then there's lots of it <laughs> plenty to go around how how do these happen uh, two dollar super chat from general Zod uh, new uh, isn't Zod I feel like that's one of the characters from Superman 2 if I'm not mistaken I and think I, it is I think and, that picture is him too yeah and that's what uh, Elon Musk was referencing recently in that meme uh, and Superman 2 is one of the first movies I saw as a kid in the theater, uh, matinee style. And I, I'll never forget that because he had that really cool, like, uh, remember that ice castle that he stayed in that he on that remote yes. planet? That was yeah. really, really cool looking. Uh, Jason Huffman coming in with a $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Jason. Appreciate you helping to keep the lights on over here. Uh, just donating to the Steel Headquarters. Electric Bill, great show as always. Thanks, Steven and Nick. Uh, yes, it is going directly to the electric bill, actually, quite literally. So thank you, Jason. Uh, General Zod wore like a uh, leather bathrobe. You remember that? Yeah, it was like a leather bathrobe. A lot of deep Vs in that crew, too. A lot of yes. deep Vs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, deep Vs were very uh, very much a, uh, more of a thing in the late 70s, early um, into the early 80s, in that that gang was kind of like a trio in Superman 2. I believe it was two two guys and a and a and like a really new wave looking woman. Yeah, that uh, was that was 1980, and that was Christopher Reeve before yeah, the uh, the accident. They, yeah, yeah, and uh, Leo says Fortress of Solitude. I think that's what it was called, right? Yeah, you know what's so funny? My girlfriend, <laughs> when we first met. Like the first uh, couple months that I was going over to her place, she she loves Superman, and actually that's how we that's how we first met. I was dressed up as Superman. I went to yeah. her work in a Superman costume, and she's like, "Oh my god!" You like I you know I I, I had glasses at the time. I looked like Superman, um, and she's like, "I'm bringing you to my fortress of solitude." <laughs> and, uh, okay, buddy. Did. Okay, buddy. <laughs> I never. Th it sounds like a letter from Penthouse Forms. Yeah, uh, it really was. Um, uh, what's good, Mama Crypto? Good to see you in the mix. Uh, good, good to see you, uh, Swift Pilot as well. Alan Schneider, good to see you here. Um, Crypto Tank Girl, what's up? Uh, that guy caught up on everyone else that kind of snuck in. Andy Shirley, never ending saga. Uh, Nameless, welcome, welcome, uh, and uh, Harsh, welcome, uh, and Harsh, Rodrigo, yeah. Rodrigo, yes, yes. Um, okay, so, you know, here we are uh, trading at 26.5, same as it ever was as far as uh, most uh, recently goes. Now, um, we are going on Thursday night. Um, where do you see the trajectory of Doge? Do you think anything dynamic is going to happen over the weekend? Well, I actually took a key out of uh, Miles's channel. He... Um, he basically outlined this uh, uh, trading this trading channel that we've been in for a little while. Um, it started on the 18th of September, um, and it basically extends up to where we're at now. Um, you know, currently, I could see. Let's see, what day is uh, the 11th? Um, by basically the 15th, we should be around 36 cents so what is that um tuesday uh, uh sorry monday um so yeah basically over the weekend i would like us you know to get up into the uh the mid 30s 31 32 somewhere in that range um and, and if we continue into that channel like uh like the article is describing um, if we can break that 30 range and have a close, a uh, daily candle close at, at or above 30, that will confirm that 53% upswing. Um, and that would be the confirmation of the breakout that we're looking for to 45 cents, which is where I'm, uh, I, I might make my next trade. Ah, okay. So 45 cents is kind of where you're looking at right now. 
Yes, if if that can if we can get a candle close, like I said, at or above thirty on the daily candle, um, I that's where I'm going to start hunting out. Like, okay, um, this would be the opportunity. We're going to start, you know, looking for uh, that swing into the uh, into the mid forties. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and we're so. Speaking of which, speaking of getting into the mid 40s, would you concur with me that it seems like the the general window there is if Doge can get to 29, 30 cents, stay there for a couple days, that uh, that will uh, give it a much higher probability of reaching uh, next stop, reaching upwards of 40 cents plus. Yeah, and I'm actually looking at the RSI right now. Um, RSI on the daily is just above. What is it at right now? Like 52, 51, 52 range. And it's curving up. Um, the MACD is in the red. Um, however, uh, we'll know. It, it looks like that uh, red cross on the MACD is starting to wane. Um, and it looks like it that, that might also be curving up into the green within the next couple days here. Yes. So... I'd like to, you know I'd like to see both of those things kind of you know swing up to confirm uh, what we're, what we're talking about here um, I, I think it's possible I'd like to see like I said I'd like to see a daily candle close above 30 um, and I think that is possible either tomorrow or Saturday or early you know like uh, like I said on the 15th which would be Monday of next week mm, mm. 15th of next week yeah okay that that would make sense that would make sense. Um, you know, so in light of what we know now, um, and the dynamics at play, um, and the potentials at play for this, this, you know, fairly probability, um, breakout that could take place, um, do you think that Elon, uh, is waiting for Doge to do a bit better in market value before he takes the leap? Uh, to uh, Tesla acceptance of Dogecoin. Do you think that's one of the markers or one of the factors uh, at play for him regarding that decision or not so much? Um, you know, a lot of people uh, theorize that, that Elon's waiting for Doge to uh, get to a certain price level before Tesla uh, announces acceptance. Yeah. I don't I don't personally think that he's waiting for any target price to... Yeah. to set doge because in fact it really wouldn't make sense you he would no almost want it to be lower um now here's a real kind of alex jonesy level conspiracy so um i, I saw today the sec filing uh that elon uh sold a bunch of his stock um he didn't sell the 10 percent that he claimed right um i can't remember how many million sh how much it was uh, it was okay, so it was five billion dollars worth, um, three point five million shares, uh, worth over three point eight eight billion. I guess five billion total after everything was said and done. Um, so it wasn't quite the ten percent of Tesla that he originally claimed. Um, however, it will be interesting to see how he allocates this this money. Um, you know, a lot of people have theorized that he's going to place his own investment into Dogecoin. Yeah. Um, you know, and at this point, if he did, it, it would pretty much go unnoticed. Um, with a, a 30, what is it, $34 billion market cap at the moment. You know, if he put a billion or let's let's just say just a hundred million or something along those lines, something mm -hmm. under a billion. Um, it really wouldn't move the needle on the market that much. Um, it would pretty much fly under the radar. Then he could say, you know, he has some skin in the game personally. Right. Um, and then, you know, he could trigger the Tesla Doge acceptance. And, and like I said, I don't think that the Robinhood wallets, and by the way, um, I don't know if you caught this, Stephen, but the um, Robinhood had their conference the other day where they announced that wallets will not be coming out until late Q1 of next year. Ah. So that is, that has for sure been announced, right? Yes, 100% yeah. confirmed. Wallets will not be available to the general public, and they, they made it very clear be late Q1. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's something I touched on briefly this morning and just mentioned it. 
and uh, it was the first time I, I brought it up, so uh, definitely good to uh, for the viewers to know that as well, so they know what to expect and can plan accordingly. Uh, now, uh, Robin Hood, considering that Robin Hood isn't doing that until the late quarter of 2022, uh, do you think that this will consequentially also defer uh, the announcement of uh, Dogecoin acceptance with Tesla? Uh, it, it possibly could, but if you look at it like this, um, you know, when did Dogecoin take off, you know, to the to the tune of eight cents in 2021? Well, it was in right. February, um, you know, so that 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 quarter one um, altcoin pump would would kind of line up perfectly. And yeah. Um, I, I don't think that's out of the realm of the po of possibility. I I could see the uh, Tesla waiting for that to happen. Um, you know, we, we theorized in previous shows that you know it might not take the wallets uh, being released to do that. I don't know what Tesla's plan is because obviously um, they want to show profits on the books for their crypto, which you know they already are. I mean, they've doubled. They've already doubled what they've. Um, spent you know right. on the crypto that they hold now so it could be we could be in the midst of a massive power play here if if uh if tesla goes to accept dogecoin they're certainly going to put uh close close to an equal amount they invested in bitcoin into doge um in which case they they would definitely wait for q1 for uh robin hood to make that announcements and and that would that would uh correlate to altcoin season as well so, right. you know, guys, the, we, we keep saying, be patient, be patient, be patient. Well, you know, this is something to be patient for. And regardless of what your plans are with your Dogecoin currently, buy, sell, hold, whatever you might be doing, um, you know, altcoin season will kick in and it'll be very, very pronounced. I mean, look at what happened to Dogecoin in February of this year. It just soared up. There was a little few months of stagnation, then it did the same thing again. So just keep in mind that we are we're now in bitcoin season that's going to roll for a few months and then altcoin season will commence so just just be on the lookout for that yeah yeah um yeah thank you for for sharing that for sharing that um you know it's it's kind of funny watching all of this kind of come to an apex uh, we're getting closer and closer uh now it's kind of just a matter of um, are some of the key factors in contributing what will contribute to this ultimate apex for Dogecoin uh, happen now, or is it all going to happen during the during the first quarter of 2022? Uh, I'm not quite sure. What we do know is this: the Dogecoin Ethereum bridge isn't happening till till the first quarter of 2022. Ethereum 2.0, God willing, they actually execute it this time around, uh, is scheduled to happen first quarter of 2022. Now we know Robinhood for sure is happening at the end of first quarter of 2022. Um, the Doge X, uh, uh, or Doge One, sorry, Doge One mission to space, uh, mission to the moon is going to happen now. That's been, uh, I don't know if they have it down to an absolute definitive date, but they have it down that for sure this is going ahead again in the first quarter of 2022. I, you know Elon has to be aware of all of these things on the timeline of which they're operating on. Um, the only wildcard factor here uh, in terms of all the, what I would call the apex ingredients are, is uh, Tesla and Dogecoin, uh, Dogecoin acceptance at Tesla. Uh, given everything I've laid out there, Nick, what probability now would you give uh, Tesla acceptance of Dogecoin to happen within 2021 versus first quarter of 22? um a lot i think a lot less i i i believe now um with how with what robin hood has come out with now keep in mind prior to this um we had all seen a lot of movement from robin hood and i actually believe that robin hood was planning on releasing their wallets um w this year um but as you know as we all know um you know robin hood had that big data breach uh, was it last week? I think it was last week. Um, so yeah, I, th I think you know 
they're making sure that everything is secure and they you know the last thing they need is to put out wallets and have all of their um you know users data <laughs> get spilled mm -hmm. um i will say this though um robin hood stock right now is not looking good um if anybody has seen or is invested in hood the hood's uh, not looking good the hood is not looking good the hood looks terrible it's not all good uh, in the hood is what you're is, saying it is far from good in the hood um it's essentially just a little bit above ipo level when it launched the day that it launched it launched i believe at 33 dollars uh right now it's th 34 47 <laughs> so yeah uh i mean it went up as high as 85 bucks right away of course this is why i tell people don't buy ipos <laughs> unless you absolutely know like what the heck is going on with the company um but yeah it, it is not all good in the hood and i believe that robin hood really really wants to um, have a positive open to their first year they might pull some tricks and um, you know do something wild to get uh, dogecoin's price to go crazy because uh, you know as most people know dogecoin represents a bulk of robin hood's earnings so <laughs> Do dogecoin succeeding is literally robin hood succeeding um so we'll see they they might you know, pull some magic to, to make Dogecoin go bananas before the end of the year. Um, but I don't see that happening. I, I, I see most of the parabolic moves that Dogecoin is, has coming up going to be that are going to happen within the first quarter of uh, 2022. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I obviously would agree there. Um, I've always said and we uh, I've been drawing pretty much the same conclusion in this regard over the last six months is I think uh, uh, it, it goes without saying I think the best is yet to come uh, that being that being said uh, I think 2022 is going to be a massive breakout year not just for Dogecoin but for the entire crypto market uh, to um, rises and uh, that we've never never seen before and even parabolic happenings that we've never never seen before you know, Nick, given the amount of time that Doge has been accumulating and plotting along here, uh, reasonably in stable, in reasonably stable fashion, um, and given what we know on the charting history over the years of Dogecoin, uh, is it safe to assume uh, that, uh, given the duration again of the accumulation period here, that the next pop is going to be quite massive? Oh yeah, I mean, are you specific to Dogecoin or crypto in general? Doge and Doge and then Xbound. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I I think the run that Dogecoin is going to go on is probably going to make you know the rest of crypto look like just it's stuck in the sand. And keep in mind, you know, Dogecoin has saved uh, Bitcoin before. It saved crypto before, um, and I think you know, with the upcoming altcoin run, it could do it again. I do think, however, that uh, Bitcoin is gonna have its you know big big giant run up to 100k. Uh, it might even go higher than that, um, you know, and then and then altcoin season will hit. Uh, Bitcoin might kind of flounder to where you know level. I, I don't think Bitcoin is gonna come crashing down right away. I think. I think Bitcoin will get that will get essentially propped up by the altcoin market, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but the run that's going to occur within the altcoin market is going to make the run that occurs in Bitcoin look uh, like silly in comparison. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, I think in all probability, uh, that is the most likely scenario. The most likely scenario. Um, so again, you know. Guys, just for some added perspective, uh, those of you who don't know, I assume most of you do, but some of you don't, uh, Nick has been a Dogecoin holder since 2014, uh, put an investment of $10,000 into Dogecoin uh, at that time, and has obviously been holding for quite some time, upwards of eight years now, eight years plus, um, and consequentially is now uh, retired and comfortable, right? So 
Um, this, now imagine when we see, and it, that's why it kind of makes me chuckle. This is all, I tell you all of this, guys, for perspective. Because I see some folks that, Joe's, why is Doge dead? Why isn't Joe's moving? This, that, and the other thing. Uh, sometimes that's just how the market works. And sometimes the, uh, especially in my opinion, uh, in projects like Dogecoin, projects like Ethereum, Bitcoin, XRP, uh, ADA, etc., cetera, um, the, uh, the, the path to wealth and financial freedom is, a, is simply um, a, game of, a game of patience. I mean, imagine, Nick, if you, uh, all the opportunities that you had, how many times have you heard people say over the years to you that Doge wasn't gonna do anything or Doge was, is dead and it just, it was moving unremarkably and it's, it's not going anywhere? Um, I didn't. <laughs> and why? Um, because I just didn't, I literally unplugged You just disconnected, right. Yeah. Um, there was a period of, I don't know, uh, six years where I didn't know what the price of anything was. Right. So you weren't so, even aware, you weren't even aware of FUD because you just, were, you just dialed out of crypto. You said, I made my investment. I'm just going to keep it there and go, just go on with my life. Yeah, exactly. Right. And did you know? that there was a high probability of Doge to be successful over a long period of time at that time, or not so much? I, I had no idea. <laughs> well, I had no, yeah, I mean, I, I knew what my, you know, I knew what I had invested in. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I didn't, I didn't really think about, yeah, I just didn't think about it. Mm. Well, you obviously, uh, you obviously believed it enough to, invest ten thousand dollars into it back in 2014 which was a lot of money for you back at that time because you had to take a bank loan out to do it so what prompted that large of an investment for you at that time in your life um you know at the time i had seen what you know i had already bought bitcoin um i, and I had made money off of bitcoin i knew I knew what crypto could do. I just, you know, didn't know to what extent. Um, I didn't know if, you know, this was so early on that we thought, you know, it could all fall apart at any moment. Uh, it, um, Mount Gox had just occurred. Mm -hmm. um, you know, buying crypto, w you know, was like the sketchiest thing in the world at the time. Yeah, the process um, of it. Yeah, the process of it was insane. So, um, you know, like it was just so, it was just so sketchy. Um, yeah, I mean, the exchange that I bought my Dogecoin on, you know, fell apart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just dissolved. Um, so many of my friends lost everything. Um, so yeah, I mean, it just. I, I just didn't know and I figured you know what um, I'll, I'll just forget about it and, you know and if it if it pops off it pops off if not cool I mean I just I just forgot about it I mean it was a lot of money to put into something to basically be unsure um, but I knew that the only way to keep myself you know away from that was just to completely disconnect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. gotcha gotcha yeah, uh, and that was obviously a, a wise strategy for you. Um, now, I'd like to pivot a little bit here. Uh, Robinhood uh, recently, uh, later yesterday, uh, made it pretty clear that th they didn't need coins uh, and projects like Shiba Inu, and they had no plans on platforming uh, it for now anyway. Um, many people were saying that this was imminent. Uh, this is something that was going to happen in the near future. I as you recall, I consistently said, I don't think this is going to be the case. And I thought that was going to be the case for the simple reason is Robinhood knows where its bread is being buttered. And that is through Dogecoin, the Dogecoin community, the overwhelmingly uh, top moneymaker in all of their crypto offerings uh, is Dogecoin. And furthermore, it's a pretty sizable chunk of their total quarterly earnings with all of their offerings included, including all their stock options. Now, uh, I said that the reason why uh, Robinhood probably wouldn't platform Shiba at this time because they wouldn't want to risk alienating a certain sector of their Dogecoin loyal uh, user base. 
Um, why rock that boat? Why jeopardize their uh, their biggest the, the community that's their biggest money maker of of contributing to their bottom line quarter to quarter? Um, and now we have confirmation that Robinhood isn't planning on um, platforming uh, sheep. And not that they may not change their mind in the future. They'll probably see where the climate is and maybe revisit in the future. Uh, who knows? Your thoughts, Nick? Sorry, I had my mic muted. Um, yeah, I thought that was... <laughs> um, I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a little cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm glad. You know, um, they've got their. They've got a lot of plates spinning right now. You know. Yeah. So for them to just onboard a new crypto, when they don't have the, you know, they don't have anything really solidified for the cryptos that they have now, right. as far as ins and outs are concerned, and they have a lot of logistical issues to solve. Yeah. Um, with the. Uh, cryptos that they currently have on the books how do you manage all of that at the same time so f yeah, yeah forget about adding another crypto it's it's just not going to happen but you know i would like i said i'd be lying to if i told you i didn't feel uh a little good to know that the the dogecoin killer is you know is not getting added to uh the exchange that really you know in robin hood made dogecoin what it is today um, mm -hmm. and, and I think, I think Robin hood knows where its interests lie. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, say what you will about loyalty in business or whatever. I mean, the, the really all businesses are loyal to is the almighty dollar. Um, but Robin hood knows that its customers keep coming back for doge. Right. And Robin hood, like I said earlier in the show has a vested interest in, in Dogecoin performing well. Mm -hmm. In fact, if Dogecoin crashes, Robinhood stock is, will already, you know, it's already way, way down, will just absolutely crumble. It could be the end of Robinhood if Dogecoin fails, which makes me so happy because it means that Dogecoin can't fail, right? Mm -hmm. Robinhood mm -hmm. has to exist. Robinhood has to succeed. And thusly dogecoin has to exist dogecoin has to succeed so um yeah it just makes me super duper happy uh wonderfully stated there nick uh thank you for that um i i couldn't agree more uh and i, I want to talk about robin hood a little bit more here but uh first i want to let people know i have a new twitter account that is where the party's at at the new twitter uh, if you don't already follow me at my new twitter account not the one you had perhaps been following before um Make sure you follow me there. I am putting a link to my new Twitter in the chat. Uh, I want to stay connected with each and every one of you fine folks. So make sure if you haven't already followed me on my new Twitter account, make sure you follow me there. Uh, Nick, in relation to that, um, I, I think you raise a really good point And one I don't think has been really explored by many people. And I haven't heard about it really discussed uh, much at all. And that is the fact, the simple fact that Dogecoin's destiny is intertwined with Robinhood's destiny. And they're not really inseparable at this point, uh, which is a good thing because, um, you know, Robinhood is a massive corporation and they are going to do whatever they need to do to thrive and survive, which is directly intertwined with the success of Dogecoin. So, Essentially, Robinhood is going to act as an arm to do whatever it takes to help Dogecoin succeed, yeah? Correct. And you know what? Even I think people fail to realize that Robinhood has a symbiotic relationship with the largest hedge fund in the world. Yes. And they are doing bid, you know, Robinhood is doing the bidding for this hedge fund. That hedge fund is doing the bidding for Robinhood. Remember the other day, I don't know how many people were in the chat the day that Doge that that Sheeb overtook uh, Dogecoin in, in market cap. Um, it didn't last very long and there was a huge fight that took place on the floor of the market the, the very next day Dogecoin shot up. Um, I'm gonna do the percentages right now live. 
um, so we can you know we can take a look at, at exactly what kind of move we were looking at here. Yeah. Um, Dogecoin shot up, and it was at the very it hit the very bottom of that trading channel and moved up to the very top. Dogecoin moved fifty five percent. And that was, you know, in one day. Right. Um, and that was directly related to Sheeb trying to, trying to uh, F around and find out. And Sheeb <laughs> F around and found out <laughs> that Dogecoin is being held by the richest people in the world. Right. And they are not going to let that asset fall no matter what. Dogecoin is being held, and, and, and it, you know what? There's there is some detriment to that. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, there's shorts. Um, there's there's definite manipulation going on on behest of the you know, these uh, whales and hedge funds for sure. Right. I'm not I'm not saying that's not taking place, but what I am saying is that Dogecoin has to be uh, propped up at the moment for Robinhood to succeed and. Robin Hood will do anything uh, within their power to make that happen, and that includes calling on hedge funds that have access to trillions of dollars to to dump in a couple billion to make sure that it doesn't uh, get overtaken. I agree with you, and you know, for for the uh, even though that has its downs, obvious downsides, uh, I think the pros outweigh the cons. There, wouldn't you say, Nick? Oh, certainly. Yeah, yeah I, I would 100% agree. It should make you, it should make you very comfortable in your investment. In fact, uh, uh, Batman and I were talking about this the other day. Um, and, uh, I don't think it, uh, maybe it was this morning. It might have been, might have been this morning. Yeah. Um, you know, for how boring uh, Dogecoin is, and I understand people get frustrated. I under, if you're in the chat and you think Dogecoin is is boring and it just moves sideways forever i under guys i understand trust me i've been holding it for <laughs> i can comfortably say i've been holding it for longer than anyone here um i understand i understand that however that also makes it you know one of the safest bets too yes <laughs> because you can almost guarantee your you're not going to lose anything. You know, it might go down a few cents, but it's going to pop right back up. Right. Um, so essentially, all Dogecoin is is just a waiting game, guys. That's it. It's just a waiting game. How long can you wait? Can you wait longer than me? I waited seven years. Mm hmm. Uh, thank you for that. And totally agree. I couldn't say it better. I said it better myself. This is something and a concept that I've been trying to get out there as best as I can. And Nick, I think you're just the guy to, you're just the perfect guy to help me do that here. Um, you should take solace and comfort that it's been uh, unremarkable for long periods of time. And uh, but what I mean by unremarkable is stable. Um, and uh, you know, and it's been hanging out in or right uh, right under. Maybe it slips down to 11 or 12, maybe for a day or two before it springs right back into that top 10. But uh, uh, you know, for for quite some time now, I really don't think it's going anywhere. Uh, for the aforementioned that uh, Nick was talking about, now this goes back into my conservative investment uh, strategy advice for a lot of people because I know a lot of newer people in the space sometimes get really overwhelmed by all the projects that are being uh, constantly marketed to them day after day. Look. If you want now, it's it's all risky in any market. It's all risky in any crypto market. There's no such thing as a sure thing. That being said, you can mitigate okay risk. You can uh, it choose to make a portfolio that's more high volatility or less by less less high volatility according to the statistical analysis over the course of the last several years or however long a particular crypto goes back into existence. So what I tell people, Nick is if you're getting overwhelmed by the game, uh, you can just literally take the safe route within crypto terms and just invest in Bitcoin, invest in Ethereum, invest in Dogecoin, and as the Italians say, forget about it. Just forget about it for years, yeah. and you'll have a very high probability of your future self thanking your current self. Your thoughts? 
I couldn't have I couldn't have said it better myself. I think mm. um, for those people, especially those people who are brand new to crypto, um, you know, of which we know. I mean, I can I can guarantee that a vast majority of people watching this show, or just the people on Twitter, you can look go look at everybody's uh, profile. Find me someone that you know doesn't their profile wasn't created in 2021 or 2020. But yeah, that's in the, that that's in the crypto game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, go find it. Um. Yeah. So I mean, it's it it is literally just a waiting game. And if you're not, you know, here's the funny part: you get people out here like, um, like <laughs> you know, he's he's my friend, but. Uh, crypto Batman is a perfect example. <laughs> he has uh, he has crypto ADHD. You know, <laughs> like he can't hold on to anything for more than I mean, a few months would be you know, a, a long time for him. Um, yeah. And I think part of it too, Stephen, is um, what happened in. I, I, you know, it's almost this is really Alex Jonesy, but you know what happened in twenty twenty was the the global economy got people primed and ready to be hanging out on their computers for you know unnecessarily long amounts of time yeah um, and you know everybody's antsy on edge um and they see all this money being made but now they're you know oh shaking everything's you know what what if it drops what if you know a virus comes and screws everything up? everybody's just like so unstable uh, just in life and then mm -hmm. you add into the fact that they're you know ADHD about their investments and it's it's a perfect rep recipe for separating people from their money um, and and you know you can almost watch it in real time yeah yeah uh, it very very uh, interestingly stated there uh, thank you for that uh, Donna coming in uh, Netpro coming in with uh, $10 super chat uh, thank you for that appreciate it do you prefer an ant miner gpu or or, or ant miner or gpu rig just curious yeah. uh, i would default to ant miner what do you say nick yeah gpus are no bueno not yeah. good for not good for mining ant miners are amazing there in, in fact um, i i had i was talking to a few different uh like medium-sized mining uh dudes within the community because I don't know. I think I've discussed this on the show before, but my plan, uh, once uh, my girlfriend and I buy our house out in the country, what I want to do is uh, hook up solar panels on the roof to run a mining facility in my basement, um, and basically, you know, like use use the solar power to to just blast crypto. The the unfortunate ant, in ant miner, really, you know, it really is the way to go. Um, mm -hmm. They are just just a heck of a getting a hold of one right now is like next to impossible. So, uh, you can. It's just extremely expensive. Uh, just because there's a, well, you can. It's just a waiting list, right? Well, yeah. If you want to buy it directly from them, it's just that. Yeah, it's just a waiting list. I mean, you, the if you want one today, you can find them. It's just the the cost is insane. I mean, even you know, cheap ant miners, like a really cheap. Cheap ant miners like five k. I think that's their cheapest one. Five thousand. Mm -hmm. um, but the the re you know the 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 regular one that most people run is from them is like twelve grand. And to be honest with you, like the revenue that you can collect from them is is not that great. <laughs> like it's good, um, but realistically, the way the real way to to mine is with solar power if mm -hmm. if you're not working off solar and you have and you're forced to uh pay the the electricity bill from your crypto earnings yeah um it, you know you it's just it's not really uh, in my opinion it's not worth it i mean you'll make money but you won't make a ton of money the way to really do it is to mine off solar so you're not paying the cost of the electricity and you're able to stack the crypto that you earn instead of instead of having to sell it to pay for the electricity. Right, right. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, I'd like to give a warm welcome to Nurse Terry Reed. Haven't seen her in the mix for a bit, so great, to, great, great to see you, Terry. That's awesome. Uh, I also saw 
uh, Robin Hood say sheesh. Uh, he got deleted. <laughs> I know it said right, that's retracted, but it's back in the mix again. And that reminded me of Crypto Batman, obviously. Uh, so Crypto Batman was it yes this morning or yesterday morning that he streamed? Oh. I think it is okay. Yesterday morning stream, I think it was that um, I stopped in and saying hi, and then he started uh, talking about me, and he brought on my. My, you know, my 60 second uh, crypto, crypto Batman video that I made. That was amazing, by the way. You did that. So that was like, per- <laughs> you, you edited it perfectly, too. Uh, yeah, he so he played that like live on the air. And uh, it was just really funny, funny to see that. Uh, I'm glad that it made him happy. I'm glad that he thought he thinks that I, I, I did him right. So um, I should make a part two. I really should. I should. Uh, I should make a part two to that. Uh, I will. I'm going to. Uh, Robin Hood. <laughs> Robin Hood. Okay. Coming in with a two dollar super chat. Y'all want them wallets or nah? Uh, I think most of us would say yeah. Well, thank you for your so <laughs> your two dollars support there. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. And, and you know they're coming. It's not a matter of if. It's just a matter of when. Uh, we know this now. We know this now. Um, yeah, uh, also, guys. Don't forget tomorrow, huge, huge show, and we're going yeah. on earlier. Are you going to be on with me, Nick? I'm skipping the gym tomorrow because I've been wanting. I, I actually talked to Ross uh, the other day on yeah, um, Twitch, but I've been wanting to talk to Ross for so freaking long. So yeah, I will 100% be here. I'll be here for the whole show. I'm skipping the gym. Um, I'm going to nap all day tomorrow so i'm fresh and uh yeah i'm excited yeah i'm excited too uh for those of you who don't know by the way jason huffman come and win with a five dollar super chat thank you so much jason uh for the sheesh <laughs> <laughs> thank thank you jason appreciate you bro um you know speaking of which so if you don't know already tomorrow's a massive show you do not want to miss this folks i'm going to have the one and only core contributor uh, developer and member of the Dogecoin Foundation, Ross Nickel, is going to be here live with me. We're going to have a, an expansive conversation, a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. Obviously, you don't want to miss that. That's going to take place at 4 p.m. in the afternoon, Central Standard Time here in America. 4 p.m., don't miss it, here on Steven Steele Live. The man with a plan, uh, with, the, with the Dogecoin plan, uh, has been the core contributor and developer for Dogecoin since 2013, and it also sits on the Dogecoin Foundation, Ross Nickel. Um, I also tweeted something out for those of you who follow me on Twitter, and if you're not on, if you are on Twitter and you don't follow me, uh, as my friend Matt would say, what the heck you doing? What the heck you doing? Go over and give me a follow on Twitter because um, I, uh, and let me again put my new Twitter in there. Make sure you're following my new Twitter. Uh, because I'll be deleting the old one soon. Um, but I tweeted out earlier today, uh, if you, what questions would you like me to ask Russ? So I will take some of the uh, the best questions that I see in the comments, and I will integrate those with my uh, with my talk with Russ. Uh, so then Nick will also be here uh, sitting in uh, with me. Uh, tomorrow on tomorrow's episode as well. So do not, do not miss that. I would also like to announce another guest. I told you guys I was bringing the heat. I told you guys I was bringing you guys the best in the space. So I am bringing it for you guys. Now I am also pleased to announce on Tuesday, Tuesday night, regular showtime, <clears throat> I'll have Dogecoin Rise. Those who are familiar with Dogecoin Rise, one of the predominant... today. Yep, and we'll get into that. One of the predominant, most popular uh, Doge-centric uh, Twitter accounts. Uh, he will be my special guest on the show on Tuesday night. So Dogecoin Rise Tuesday night. Ross Nickel, uh, Dogecoin primary Dogecoin developer here tomorrow afternoon. Bookmark both of those. Bookmark both of those. Uh, as you were saying, Nick. Yeah, I, I had a nice, uh, pretty long conversation with Dogecoin Rise today. He is uh, he's trying to get in into uh, into shape, and he's a he is like a a tall like solid dude. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I can get this guy freaking jacked. <laughs> um, so that is the plan. We're you know we've got a couple phases going on. He's uh, 
He's in phase one right now, so he's going to get his blood work done for me. He's going to send me uh, the results. We're going to take a look and see what he's got going on under the hood. And I am going to get my goal is to get Dogecoin Rise just like a freaking just make this guy look like a freaking jacked god. Yeah. Well, we will love to see the the after results on there. So here you heard it here first. Dogecoin Rise officially going on the uh, the Nick Balls protocol. Uh, so um, are you going to be with are you going to be with me uh, co-hosting that uh, that show as well, Nick? Unfortunately, um, it's on oh, that's Tuesday, right. right. Oh yeah, you've yeah. got plans. Okay, um, yeah, that, yeah. that's right. It'll be actually a good time to maybe have uh, Sadaf come in. Uh, so there you uh, go. Yeah, we'll we'll have Sadaf come in. She's long overdue, by the way. And uh, she she should be ready to be on camera at this point now. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll work and we'll try to dial in Sadaf for for that episode, guys. If you're brand new here, you've been watching Steven Steele live. I'm Steven Steele. My go my co-host is Dogecoin Millionaire Nick Balls. So glad to have you with us. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit all in that notification bell uh, and join our awesome community. I believe that, honestly, I think we have the best community in the space and I want you to be a part of it. Um, also, um, if you would like to become a member, uh, I do uh, probably about three to four members only uh, streams, breakout sessions a week, okay? And then you also get that nifty um, uh, badge next to your name like you see the members have uh, in, in the chat. And then you also get the the cool emoticons, uh, uh, members only emoticons. Uh, so you get all that stuff, and it uh, only costs four dollars a month. It's one dollar a week to become a member at entry level. I offer three different tiers of membership. Uh, I can't go any lower, folks. I am the limbo champion. So um, if you haven't already become a member, uh, please consider that. I think you get a lot of value for uh, very, very little. So um, and just another great way to support what we do here. Um, so Nick, yeah. Uh, look, exciting week, right? We got Ross coming up. We've got Dogecoin Rise coming up. I'm going to be announcing some other guests after those shows are finished for you soon that I'm lining up as well. Uh, we're going to keep on truck and we're going to keep growing this channel exponentially, just like we're going to keep growing Dogecoin exponentially. And it's going to be a symbiotic relationship of Doge Mentum across the board. Nick, I know you've been in the game here for eight years plus. Uh, and I know we've been trading sideways for the last six months, but are you excited? Are you excited about, about what's transpired? Oh, yeah. I'm specifically excited for next year. I, I just took a look at the Doge 1 uh, mission to the moon. Uh, the, the date is actually uh, is, or it's set for Q, it is set for Q1 next year. So... There is so much stuff going on with Dogecoin in quarter one of 2022. Um, you know, we're already, you know, halfway through November. You know, we're not that far away, guys. <laughs> we're, it, it, you know, all this stuff that, that's happening for Dogecoin is right around the corner. And in in the grand scheme of things, you know, Two or three months <laughs> after, for me, after waiting seven, going to be eight years here. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it it's uh, <laughs> it's well worth the, the couple months of chilling. And, and that's why, like I said, if you see an opportunity now, uh, of course, I'm working with a, whole, a lot more Dogecoin than <laughs> the average individual. Uh, but if, if you see an opportunity for... You know, a little bit of gain potential here and there. You see the price jump up, you know, into the 40s or into the high 30s. Um, and, and you see an opportunity. And you, even if you want to just take that opportunity to, to uh, you know, reinvest. Uh, right. Just up your bag a little bit. You can take, you know, take those opportunities as they come along the way. But just keep in mind, guys, Dogecoin is... It, it, it is a rocket ship that at any freaking moment can blast us, you know, com just go parabolic. Um, and you don't want to be caught with your pants down. You do not want to be caught with your pants down. You want to have your spacesuit on at all times. You want to you want to be living in that spacesuit. You want to be peeing in that spacesuit. You want to be drinking or eating astronaut ice cream. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> so just be be ready. I mean, 
take the opportunities when they present themselves, but yes. just keep in mind that, um, you know, at any moment this thing can blast off. So just be prepared. Yeah, I agree. It kind of reminds me of the rapture, right? You don't want to get you want to get caught with your pants down. You want to be ready when it comes, because when it comes, it's going to be absolutely massive, right? So um, I kind I kind of see an uh, a, a somewhat of an, an analogy there, because um, I, I do think that uh, you know it 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 stands to reason that this next breakout is has a high probability of being the biggest one that we've ever seen. Now it's hindsight's always 2020, right? And I'll, what's the number one question we get as content creators when things start going parabolic with Dogecoin or any coin is, is it too late to buy in? It's too late to buy in. All the FOMO starts setting in, all the FOMO starts setting in. Uh, well, it depends how long you're holding. Uh, even if you FOMO on a good project, a solid project, if you're willing to hold for a long period of time, uh, chances are it's probably still a good investment. Uh, most people aren't willing to do that, however. But also, wouldn't it be great just to have your positions already squared away before that FOMO sets in? Uh, that's where the real money is made, right? It's stepping out and being brave when others are not. Stepping out being patient when others are not. Honestly, I could probably, I probably should put that in writing and in a plaque and sell them to, to everyone in, that's in this game, in this market, because uh, that, in my opinion, that is probably the most quintessential mantra of all. What do you say, Nick? Yes, I would. I would certainly agree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that's a really important to keep in mind. And uh, this is a message I don't really see many channels propagating at all, which surprises me. Nothing against uh, content creators like BitBoy Crypto, who's the largest, most popular crypto-centric content creator on the planet. Uh, but I'm uh, just that being said, I am amazed uh, when and I watch him uh, how he, on a day-to-day -day basis, kind of advocates for uh, swing trading and day trading techniques as re as it relays uh, to crypto to his audience. Well, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think he gives a little. Uh, too much credit to his audience. Um, I think that he thinks that everyone. Yeah, and, and, and I'm not saying I'm not saying his advice is done out of malicious intent. Just to no, be, no, be clear. no. Yeah, I, I think that, you know he, um, he thinks that everyone has the, the wherewithal that he does. Um, I think that he thinks that his whole entire audience has been following him, uh, you know, since day one. And that they can do what he can do. And keep in mind, you know, BitBoy Crypto's working with a portfolio that's like valued in the tens of millions of dollars. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, you know, he he can do a, a lot of different things, and um, he just bought a Lamborghini, you know. So right, um, it just goes to show you, you know, like he has the ability to do stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean. I think that we um, ex express our opinions, uh, especially when it comes to what you should do trading-wise, um, to an audience that we kind of know very well. And we know that a lot of people aren't, uh, you know, they're not, they're, they're brand new, or they're not brand new, but they're, you know, in their first couple years of, of crypto investing. Yeah. Um, and, and those aren't people who should be swing trading or day trading or, you know, these are people who should be looking for just really so rock solid entry points and, and DCA -ing. and just doing that over time. Um, you know, that that's that's how the average individual above by which I was myself an average individual. That's how I made all my money. And I think that's the safest way to do it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's that. That's what should be preached to the majority of people who are brand new or, you know, kind of fairly new to crypto. Yeah, completely concur. Completely concur. I see Manju asking in the chat, can I buy Doge with a 2x margin at this price? Well, certainly. I think it's an incredibly high probability that if you were to um, enter and take a position at Doge at about 26 and a half cents right now, that you would be able to... Uh, double your investment, uh, sir. It's just a matter of how long you're willing to hold in order to make that happen. 
Um, or Bill Batman just put a hundred x leverage on something. Um, what? I don't know what to hold on. I'll try and find out. <laughs> <laughs> don't uh, do this, people. He's wilding out right now, man. He's yeah, wilding I, out. Not recommended. <laughs> Sheesh. He said, Sheesh. Uh, he goes, just long my first 100x position. I'm addicted. So much fun. Gorilla face. Um, <laughs> I just said, bruh. Um, it appears that he is up 16%. I don't know what. <laughs> he blurred everything else out, so I can't tell you. Well, let me take a look. Um, is it uh, Loopring? Probably. Um, I don't know if they. I don't know if you can get Loopring's really new. I don't think you can get. I don't think they have leverage options on Loopring. Well, I don't know. Let Let's see. Let me see if I can get. Uh, um, you know what? I'm just. How about this? Uh, is, is anybody in the chat interested in finding out what what crypto uh, <laughs> Batman 100 X? I'll text them. Uh, he he 100 X or he 100 X in on it or did he 100 X profit? He, he, he's using 100 X leverage. Oh, yeah. Does anybody want to know? I'll I'll text <laughs> him right Cri now. Crypto Batman, careful, bro. <laughs> okay, I'm 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 texting him right now. Let's see what he says. Okay, okay. Oh, what a character, man. Sheesh. Oh wow. Yeah, I, we're we're not in. We don't endorse that strategy. <laughs> it could work out for him though. It could work out for him though. Um, Jason says I think someone needs to shake the dog treat bag for the Doge. Uh, Doge will wake up. Doge is ready to wake up. Stretch and take a run. I agree. It's uh, overdue, and I think it's uh, I think it's about 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 ready to happen. Um, yeah. So just uh, uh, keep us keep us posted there, Nick. Keep us. Okay. Posted I just there. I just shot him a text message. We'll see. We'll see what he says. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good to see him live stream again. I know he took a break for almost a month there. Uh, yeah. So well, he was in Mexico for a couple weeks. So. Yeah, yeah, unwinding and uh, enjoying himself, which is uh, great. Uh, but it's also great to have him back on the air. Uh, it's great to see him on mornings. It's kind of nice. I, I, you know, we usually do night shows, but now we're speckling with day shows. Uh, but it's always good to see uh, people mix it up. And uh, it's so funny, Stephen, because you you started doing uh, morning shows. You know, you are starting to do a lot more morning shows. Yeah, it, and it's right when my. <laughs> I started waking up later. Yeah, you know, I was like, yeah, when I texted you, like, where are you at? You're like, oh, I'm just getting together. I'm like, I thought you were a rise and shine guy. It, I was until the time changed. Oh, okay. The, the, so you're still fall, adjusting. Yeah, the fallback really got me. Um, yeah. But you know what? I actually told my girlfriend because I was getting, I kept getting up earlier and earlier and earlier to the point where I was, she wakes up and I'm not, not joking here. My girlfriend wakes up between 3.30 and 4.00. Um, every day. So, um, I was getting up, you know, closer to when she gets up and you know what? I do like waking up early. Um, but I had been getting up consistently earlier over the course of like a month. Right. And I told her, I was like, I just want to get, I just want to start sleeping in more. <laughs> um, so I have been, but I'm also staying up later. So it, it, I think it's just even evening out. Okay. So we got an answer from from Batman. Okay, what did what did Crypto Batman have to say here, Nick? <laughs> um, he shorted mana on a hundred x leverage. Um, he didn't get liquidated, but he closed the position out already. Okay, okay. What do you think? I I, I think you a hundred x leverage is the worst idea <laughs> in the world. I don't. So many, agree. they banned, a lot of exchanges banned it. You can't even do it. You're technically not allowed to do it in America anymore. Uh, well, maybe we should not talk about it anymore. We don't, we don't want to get him in no, trouble. No, I mean, it's not illegal. You can talk about it. But. <laughs> yeah, he, he's definitely risking it for the biscuit. We wish him well. But uh, what, what, I'm going to take a look. I just want to see if, because I know, I now I know his entry. Oh, you know what? Um, Mana dipped, actually. Okay. He, he made money. He did. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Um, so, 
you know, perhaps it wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't the worst decision. No, uh, no, it was good. Yeah, Loop Ring has been absolutely going wild. Um, is, is it, it a good, still pumping? Is it a good time to buy in now? I don't know. I don't know. It's come down. Yeah, I I, w- I would imagine that it's uh, in a correction period right now. Yeah, it's kind of it's it, uh, it's kind of flattened out. I mean, it, you know, it's still over three. I wouldn't be getting in right now myself, but um, yeah, I loop ring is I I don't know much about it. I can't really comment on if it's a solid, really solid project or not. But um, mm-hmm. from what I've heard, I mean, people are are doing well with it. Right, right. Um, let's see here, and also, uh. Those of you, I know a few of you like me are invested into poker, call letters PKR, that's a DeFi gaming uh, project. Uh, they are going to go be on a new exchange tomorrow, uh, S, or sorry, C-E-X, sex, <laughs> C-E-X. Uh, there will be platformed on that tomorrow. Uh, so uh, that, I think that will bode well for it. Um, overall, the trajectory has been very, very positive, that project. Um, yeah. But uh, Nick, my back and my butt. I want to go on, but my back and my butt sitting on the edge of this couch are really starting to <laughs> really starting to bother me. I have oh, dude. I have my desk now. I have my um, my streaming my gaming desk. It came in the mail. Uh, it just came in the mail today, but it's big. It's heavy. I still have yet to assemble it and make room for it. So uh, over the next few days, uh, I will have that, uh, and so I'll be able to do a lot more um, longer streams if and when I choose to do it. I can marathon stream between. A uh, proper chair and a uh, and a and a desk. So, um, anyway, guys, I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. Don't forget tomorrow, big show with Dogecoin Developer Foundation member Ross Nickel, 4 p.m. here. Don't be square. Be here. It'll be myself, my esteemed co-host, and the great Ross Nickel. Do not miss it, folks. Uh, everyone, thank you so much. Appreciate <laughs> each. And, go ahead. Steven, do you want to host? Do you want to do a space after this? I need a break. If we can, oh, okay, okay. We can do we can do a member space, but I need like twenty minutes down. <laughs> I need to. Uh, okay, I'll be. Yeah. I'll be. Uh, yeah, we'll do another. Yeah. yeah, I just I need to give my back a, a break, but uh, we'll we'll do a member space uh, probably tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Uh, th- thank you, everyone, for showing up, and I hope you got something out of it. Hope you had fun. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe. If you're not already following me on Twitter, on my new Twitter, it's Mr. Steven Steele with a little underscore at the end, and it's bright yellow. It's my mug with a bright yellow background. Can't miss it. Make sure you follow me there. Um, until tomorrow, you guys. Uh, you know, we'll see it. We'll see you then. 4 p.m. with Ross Nickel. Thanks again, everyone. This is Steven Steele and Dogecoin millionaire Nick Balls signing out.